But if you want to be a matured Christian, there are seven things I want to propose, just very fast. First of all, is that when you want to worship God, worship God because He's your creator. Worship God because it is His due. Not because He's a miracle worker or because you're expecting something from Him. No, that should not be the reason why you worship God. God wants us to be in good relationship with Him. Life alone is already a very big miracle. Sleeping and waking up alone is a very big miracle. Secondly, whenever you are sick, go to hospital and treat yourself, but don't forget to pray. There is a simple principle. Treat yourself as you pray and pray as you treat yourself. Medicine itself is a miracle. Thirdly, spiritual sickness exists. Don't be deceived. Spiritual sickness exists, but not all sickness is spiritual. Return this very well. Then, fourthly, miracle is real. Miracle is real, but don't wait for it. Don't let it be an option. It should not be an option for you, miracle. Do you know why? Because there are two major characteristics of miracle, or should I say, nature of miracle. The first is that miracle is unmerited. Don't think that because you pray so much that miracle will happen in your life. No, it doesn't function that way. You, 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 you don't merit miracle. It happens at the discretion of God. The Bible says, I have pity for whom I want to have pity. It's not because you pray so much that miracle will happen. You can pray so much and miracle will happen. You can pray so much and it will not happen. You see somebody who is just very quiet somewhere, not even knowing your God, and miracle will happen for that person. So don't count on miracle. It is unmerited. Then secondly, also is that miracle must be something that happens all of a sudden in the sense that you don't program it. It is a discretion of God. He knows when he wants to do it and when he wants to give us whatever he wants to give us. You don't program miracle. So what you cannot program, you don't know whether it will happen or not. What you don't merit as an individual, how do you make it an option? Miracle should not be your option. But then miracle exists. But don't put it as your option. Walk. And then if miracle meets you, let it meet you walking. Then, fifth is that whatever human effort can solve, get yourself engaged. It means that God has given that situation over to man to handle. Don't what man can handle, you want miracle to come and do it. No! Engage yourself so that miracle can just meet you there. Let me just take for example, you are into business. You don't wait for miracle to happen. Start up a business. Then as you are doing that business, you can meet your destiny helper. Somebody can meet you and you treat that person very well. And, and just, just a friend of mine brought his, uh, his brother from, from, from Africa to here in the US. It was not his own doing. He rendered service to somebody and the person said, you are a very good guy. How is your family? My family is in Africa. He said, ah, in Africa, can you bring at least one of them here? And that was how it happened. And the person helped him. That is a destiny helper in one way or the other. So be doing something so that if miracle meets you, it will happen. It can be financial, just as I explained, destiny helper. It can be health-wise. Be going to the hospital. As you're going to the hospital, I have a friend that was very sick. The doctor said, this is your sickness. I don't have a, a particular, for the moment we don't have anything that can cure it, but I am doing a research on it. Do you permit me to use you as an experiment? He said yes. Doctor used him and it worked perfectly well. So, it can as well be something like political. Don't say God is there, things will change politically. No, you have to engage yourself. If it means revolution, let there be revolution. 
and then God will pass through that revolution and something good will come out of it. Whatever human beings can change, engage yourself, don't wait for miracle, don't wait for God to do it. It means that God has given that authority to human beings. Number six of what you should know to be a matured Christian is that the church is not against scientific discoveries. In fact, we have many saints, we have many priests, many pastors, many men and women of God, many church people who have discovered things, who are engaged in scientific discoveries up to today. We have many of them. But what the church advises is science with conscience. Then lastly, number seven is that as a Christian, be strong with your faith. The principle is this. Even when you don't have arguments, even when you don't know what to say about your faith, be convinced, keep quiet. Then when you go back, ask your pastor, ask whosoever can help you to grow. That's why we are all asked to have our spiritual directors, something like spiritual guide, that when you are going through something, you can share with the person who is much more experienced than you. It can be a priest, it can be a lay person, just as in the marriage or in the baptism, you have your spiritual, what you call Godfathers, you have your spiritual guide also. You can come up and ask a priest or somebody that you know here that knows more than you. So these seven things, they are very, very capital if you want to live a matured Christian life. I mean, worship God because he's God, not because you're waiting for miracle from him. And then when you are sick, go to hospital, but then pray. The principle is that Pray as you treat yourself and treat yourself as you pray. Then thirdly, is spiritual sickness exists, but that does not mean that every sickness is spiritual. Just to understand it. And then fourth is that miracle exists, but you shouldn't make a miracle or an option in your life because miracle cannot be programmed because miracle is never sure. You don't merit it. It is to the discretion of God. And then number five is that when they, wherever, whatever human help or human engagement can solve, get yourself engaged, don't wait for miracle. It means that God has given that situation over to man to handle. Then sixth is that the church is not against science. Engage in science. What the church advocates is science with conscience. Then lastly is that as a believer, even when you don't have any argument for the, to defend yourself, keep quiet and stand firm then ask questions to authorities or to people that know more than you after. Don't engage in argument that you know that you're not win. No, it doesn't mean that you don't have faith, but it means that you don't understand clearly and you don't need to understand everything before you believe. As simple as that. Sometimes you don't even know anything, but the experience has made you to believe. So when people bring out theories, you tell them, I don't know this theory, but all I know is that practically this thing helps me. That is only your argument. 